Hello, welcome to another video. We will be solving an exact equation and the only confusion that I notice students have is recognizing what to do with what they have, knowing which one is a partial derivative with respect to x or which one is a partial derivative with respect to y and what to do with them and how to get the final equation. Before I go into this, let me show you something that would clear your confusion. Assuming we have a function which is a combination of x and y, okay? So it's a function of both x and y, something like this. Let's say you have 2x cubed y squared plus, let's say, y minus x squared, something like this. Now, what do you call a partial derivative? It is a lot easier than using the product rule because if I ask you to take the derivative of this, it becomes implicit differentiation and we don't do that in partial, der in, in partial derivatives. What we do is we're going to take a partial derivative of f just with respect to x. It means if it is not a function of x, you treat it as a, as a constant. So here, this is my only concern. This is the only thing I'm going to differentiate. Everything else I'm going to leave alone, okay? So, which is actually part of what we do in, in, um, in product rule. Here, if I take the derivative of this, see, I'm going to leave this 2 and this y squared alone, and what I'm going to get will be 3 times 2 is 6, so I'm going to get 6x squared, y squared. When I go here, because it does not contain any x, it becomes 0, okay? And this contains x, so this becomes minus 2x. So this is what I get. Now watch this. I have taken the partial derivative of this with respect to x. Now let me do it with respect to y. The partial derivative of this with respect to y, okay, will be equal to, if I treat this as a constant and just take the derivative of this, I'm going to get 4x cubed y, this is going to become 0 because it doesn't contain y, and this, when I uh, take the derivative, it's going to be partial derivative, will be just 1. So now, I have these two. You see, these two I have done, I have generated, represent these two functions for an exact equation, because they came from the same source. Now, do I know if these are exact? The only way I can claim it is because I said we're solving an exact equation. But when you're given a, given a problem, you really don't know that these two came from the same function, having taken partial derivatives. Now look, this is not correct because I'm supposed to multiply this by dx because I took the partial derivative with respect to x. So when this goes the, the other way, this dx goes that way, okay? So just want you to know that. So, how do you know which one has been differentiated with respect to x? Imagine you multiplying this way, putting this dx here. So, this one has been differentiated with respect to x, partially differentiated, and this was a partial different, dif uh, uh, a derivative or partial differential of the, um, of the original f. So, all we're looking for is the original f. For this one, we already know the original f. We now have the two partials. Now watch what's going to happen. Assuming I now say, okay, I have taken a partial with respect to x. Let me take a partial with respect to y. Let me see what I'm going to get. So I already differentiated this. So if I do a second differentiation of this, watch. So let me say, let this be what I call m, which is analogous to this. This is my m always m. What do I have? So that's my m. If I decide to take a second partial of this, so it's going to be like this. d is now going to be with respect to y. I already did with respect to x of, of f. Okay, it's going to be d f dx. Okay, it's going to be you're differentiating partially uh, dy of m, which we call this m subscript, subscript y. If you do this, what would you get? Now let's do the same thing. We're going to now treat this as our variable in this case, and this is a constant. This is going to be 2 times 6x squared times y. It's going to be equal to 2 times 6, which is 12, sorry, 12x squared times y. 
And because this does not contain Y, it disappears. You see how things are disappearing, even if they were major at the beginning, but they're not showing up. Okay, so note that the things you see here have lost some things, potentially. We need to find them back. Okay, now, we got this. Now, let's show that if we do the same thing, so there was a man called Alexis Clairaut. He said that it does not matter the order in which you do your partial derivatives, you will get the same exact answer. That's why we call it exact equations, okay? So whether you first took the partial derivative with respect to x, then y, if you go in the, other, in the other direction, you do y before x, your final answer is gonna be this. So if we get, I, I know because we started from the same spot, if we get the same answer after doing this, so let's do, take the partial derivative with respect to x of d, f, dy, which we said was d, dx, we called this n originally, we said this was n, so this is our n, okay, um, and this is going to be n with respect to x, with the answer we're going to get now, so if we differentiate this, with, take the partial with respect to x, so we're treating these as constant, it's going to be 12x squared y, it's going to be 12x squared y, so you see that because we started from the exact function, we're going to get the same thing. Okay? Now, that's the idea behind exact equations. Whatever has the dx multiplying it, you have to view as if you have cross-multiplied so that that dx is here. So this has been differentiated partially with respect to x. So my m is equal to y squared. m equals y squared. And I have my n equals 2xy plus cosine y, okay? So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to now do apply Clairaut's theorem. I'm going to do a second differentiation. So what was initially differentiated with respect to x, I'm going to try and differentiate it with respect to y just to be sure that this is true, okay? So let's take the partial derivative of this. So we're going to say d dy of m will be, you see, we got 2y. Let's do this. This one, we're going to do the second part, okay? We're going to say d, dx of n, if we, if we treat this as a constant, so you're going to get 2y. Well, there is no x here, so that's it. You can see that this is equal to this. Now you know it's an exact differential equation. So you want to write this as exact, so say, the equation is exact, okay? Why? Because this partial derivative equals this partial derivative by Clairaut's theorem, and we're good. So what you do with your m, or I would recommend you do m, or you look at the easier one to integrate, okay? Just look at the easier side to integrate. That's usually the secret. This is easy to integrate with respect to x, because why with respect to x? Remember? that this was originally differentiated, partially differentiated with respect to x. That's why we're multiplying it by dx. So you're gonna say that if I wanna go back to the original function, okay, it definitely is the integral of y squared dx, which this would be, you introduce x, it's gonna be xy squared. Okay, should you do plus c? Well, you should do plus c, but what do you think the c is? Remember, when you take in, in just regular integration, okay, um, or when differentiation, whatever you differentiate that goes to zero is what you add back, which is usually a constant. But when you're doing partial derivatives, what you add back is what was capable of going to zero, which could be a combination of a function of y and a constant. We don't know. So what we just have to say is we're going we're gonna to add a function of y. Because if we differentiate this now, this is going to disappear. If we differentiate this with respect to x, you're going to go back to y squared, and this is going to go to zero. So this is what was capable of disappearing. So our original function we started with, which is our f. f as a function of x comma y, the example I gave is now this guy, which is x y squared 
plus g of y. So now, let's go back. From this, we know we can get this because based on what we explained, this was initially diff partially differentiated with respect to y. Okay, that's why this y is here. It was partially, so let's, we know this is the function. We know if we differentiate this with respect to y, we're gonna get this. So we know that the partial derivative with respect to y of f, the original f as a function of x and y, will be equal to this. But what would it be? Let's do it on this one. Well, we're gonna get, with respect to y, we're gonna get 2xy plus the derivative of this we don't know, so we just leave it as g prime of y. But we know that this is the same thing as n. That's what we said. So this is the same thing as 2xy plus cosine y. So as you can see, we're correct. And this is this. Clearly, g prime of y is cosine y. So how do we get our g back? Well, we have to integrate this. So we can say, which implies that g is equal to because this, remember, this was already, this was, has been different, um, differentiated with respect to y. So our integration has to be with respect to y. It's going to be cosine y dy. Okay? And what is that? Well, it's going to be, okay, it's going to be sine y. Now, should we do plus c here? Because we're still working, I I'm going to leave the c, but because we're still gonna have a C and all the C's we can just push to one side. Okay, so uh, let's, let's do plus C. Okay, let's do plus C. And then clearly this is our original F, don't forget. So G as a function of Y, let's write it properly. G as a function of Y is equal to sine Y plus C, which means that the original function, the general solution is that our answer is x y squared plus sine y. Okay, so this is what our original is. But remember, when we took the partials, we ended up with a zero on the right, which means whatever was on the right was neither a function of x nor a function of y. So it was a constant. So we can easily say, our original f was equal to a constant. And what was that constant? We don't know. We can take this constant to join it so that you becomes the original constant, whatever this is, and everything just stays. So this could have been equal to zero because that was the original equation we had, but we could as well just say, you know what? I'm going to make this a constant. Push everything to the other side, and this is it. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.